Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Tools of the Trade. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about a debugging tool, uh, mainly the sanitizers. So, you know, what exactly are these sanitizers and what do they do and you know, why should you care about them? So let's go ahead and open up uh, two of them that we'll look at today, which are address sanitizer and thread sanitizer. So starting with address sanitizer, um, this is a memory error detector in C, C++. Um, typically, we just refer to it as ASAN or we abbreviate it as such. Um, and what this is for is, you know, detecting things like use after free, heat buffer overflows, use after return, use after scope, etc. All these kinds of memory errors. And the real nice thing about um, ASAN compared to other debuggers is its speed, right? It's very fast um, and it scales a lot better compared to something like Valgrind. So it's a very, it's a very important tool to know and it's a very commonly used tool today. And thread uh, sanitizer is another type of sanitizer, but this is for um, basically data race detection for C and C++. So data racers are one of the most uh, difficult kinds of uh, most difficult kinds of errors to debug, um, and they can lead to a lot of headache. So having something like thread sanitizer can be incredibly useful. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples. So let's go ahead and pull up a terminal, and we'll go to the sanitizer directly uh, or directory. So first we'll take a look at ASAN. So, you know, starting out, we'll, we'll have this, you know, simple struct called simple array, and it'll have a data pointer and a size pointer. So basically it's just going to be a simple implementation of an array that's dynamically allocated. You know, we were trying to follow some, you know, design practices like RAII. So inside of our constructor, we'll go ahead and, um, you know, we'll just do a quick check to make sure we're not trying to allocate, you know, zero elements. Uh, then we go ahead and you know allocate some number in elements and then we set the size equal to in and in our destructor we go ahead and free that data and then we, i've got implemented here just the bracket operator so we can index it like a normal array now what's exactly the problem here right it's it's not very obvious but let's go down and see what we're how we're actually using it inside of our main function so we create a simple array with 10 elements then we go ahead and initialize each of those elements uh, basically, we're just with the square of the index, and then we end up doing a copy down here, right? So we end up saying simple array is equal to a2, or simple array a2 is equal to a1. Now, nothing looks wrong with this from, you know, just you know, blatantly wrong with this if we just stare at it. Uh, but the problem here is that we're actually only doing a shallow copy, right? So what exactly does that mean? Well, when we copy a1 and a2, we're using the default copy constructor because we haven't specified one. So what it's going to do is it's going to copy the size into the new struct, and it's also going to copy the data pointer into new struct, but it's not going to do another allocation, right? And this is a problem because now when both objects go out of scope, they're going to call a delete on the same pointer, right? So we're going to end up having a double free here, right? So let's see how we can debug this using um, address sanitizer. So if we go ahead and do G++ on ASAN, Right. Well, we can go ahead and turn on this address sanitizer switch using um, uh, dash F and then sanitize equals and you, we can choose either address or thread. Right. So let's go ahead and compile it with um, um, address and then let's let the output name be, say, just ASAN. Now, if we go ahead and run ASAN, you see we get this big long print come out. So we see we got an error address sanitizer attempting double free on this, this some sort of address right here. And you see it even gives us, you know, what we're trying to do, you know, delete on. And you see it's from this ASAN new delete. Um, but this isn't exactly as helpful as we would want it to be. We'd like to know, say, within our program. So here we see an executable and it says, you know, ASAN plus some kind of offset here. But I actually want to know a line number. And in GCC, if we go ahead and just recompile, um, if we go ahead and just recompile, say, ASAN, um, and I put the dash G flag, right, to basically compile uh, in debug mode, and I run this again, you see it even tells me where that delete is occurring, right? So ASAN CPP um, line 19. So let's go ahead and open up ASAN.CPP again. Let's go to line 19, and you see that's in the destructor, right? So we've got a problem here. Our destructor is basically um, doing this double free because we only copied the pointer, right? We had a shallow copy here instead of a deep copy. All right, so that's a pretty simple example of how we can use something like uh, something like address sanitizer. So now let's look at a thread sanitizer example. And this is another fairly common example that occurs, you know, even in, you know, production level code. Um, it can be easy to miss. So let's look at tsan.cpp. So what are we going to do here? So we'll go ahead and include iostream, mutex, and thread. 
And we'll go ahead and just create an integer. And we'll also have a lock because we're going to launch two threads to say do something very simple. We'll go ahead and just increment this integer from both threads. Now, if we want to make sure that we don't have a, a data race here, we're going to have to need to lock whenever we're trying to update, update this integer because it's not an atomic int or anything. So we need to do uh, create some kind of critical section. So one way we can do that is with, say, a lock guard, right? So a lock guard follows that RAII design principle where, you know, basically in the constructor for the lock guard, we grab some kind of lock, and then in the destructor, we free that lock. That way we don't run into, you know, potential deadlocks where, you know, we forgot to free, it's say, the end of a function. So inside of here, right, we'll create a lock guard and increment A, and then we'll create another lock guard um, and we'll increment A, right? So basically both of these threads, they're both going to be incrementing A inside of some critical section. And once the loop goes back around, it'll just release this lock from this lock guard. So we'll just call T0 and T1.join and print the value of A down here. So let's see what happens if we just compile this initially, right? So if you just you know, do G++ on thread sanitizer, we link it against libp thread. Just, that's just what how thread is implemented on my system. And then we'll do dash O something like tsan, and let's go ahead and run it. So we get the value of 2000. So if we go back into our code, both of them are updating, you know, a thousand times. Everything seems like it's working, right? And maybe if I run this multiple times, well, it looks like everything's fine, except, you know, I might run into an error every once in a while, right? So this is, we've got a, you know, a non-deterministic error. So sometimes we get an error, sometimes we don't. And there may be cases where we get the error a lot more. So in this case, what ends up happening is we have a race, but because we're only incrementing, say, a thousand times, all those increments occur way faster than it takes to, say, spawn the next thread. So we may never see, say, the error. But if we increase, say, the number of increments, and we go ahead and recompile and run tsan again, now almost every time we'll see we get an error, right? So instead of seeing, you know, 20,000 total increments, we only end up seeing um, you know, something like 1,000 or 10,000 um, or, you know, 16,000 sometimes. Maybe occasionally we'll get the right answer, but now most of the time we get the wrong answer. And that's just because we're doing enough work where both the lives, or both threads are going to be alive at the same time. Okay, so again, this can be kind of a difficult error to debug. So let's see what happens here, right? So we compiled this, but now let's compile it with, uh, let's go ahead and compile it with um, thread sanitizer enables. We'll do dash F, um, oh, we'll do dash F, uh, sanitize equals thread. And then again, we'll put, um, we'll compile with debug dash G, and we'll go ahead and run this. And then we can see if we go ahead and run tsan, now we get a whole bunch of print uh, printouts right here, right? So we get um, warning, we've got a data race here. So it doesn't say it's an error, it doesn't know if the you know, data race is fine or not, so it just says it's a warning. And so it basically says, you know, which threads have the data race. So we have, you know, thread two and thread one right here. Uh, and then we have exactly where this data race is occurring. So it's occurring, you know, previous write of size four and a read of size four here. Um, and this is basically the integer that we're incrementing. And so we can see this is from um, tsan.cpp uh, at line 29 here, and then tsan.cpp at line 22. And if we go ahead and go into our program and line 22, we have our A++. And on line 29 here, we have our other A++. So it was able to find this data race here. Now, you still might be wondering, well, where is this data race occurring, right? So this is actually a, a fairly fun and common bug. So we have this stood lock guard here. But the problem is, is we didn't actually pass the lock to the constructor, right? So we made this mutex lock. We basically just created this uninitialized lock guard here. Or basically, or, so, Inside of the constructor, we actually have to pass the lock if we wanted to lock anything. So here we can go ahead and pass lock as we should have in the first place, right? We pinpointed where our data race is, you know, all of our warnings go away. We can go ahead and compile this with, you know, f sanitize thread again. And now you can see if we go ahead and run tsan, now it doesn't spit out anything. You know, we've got it, everything running just fine. We'll get our expected value of 20,000 at the very end because we're handling that critical section correctly. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. It's a brief introduction to some of these sanitizer tools, specifically address sanitizer and thread sanitizer. I'll have links to this Google Sanitizer's GitHub page um, below. If you want to check out the code for any of my other series, check it out at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.